Good morning, good morning. What a show, what a show, because this is my first time here at Web Summit, and to say that I'm overwhelmed is actually an understatement. But this is, I hope everyone's having as much fun as I've, I've been having. So today's talk, uh, we, I called it FFS, because that is really what the reaction of a lot of the content providers out there that are, have, to, have to provide experience for sport fans, because the expectations of sport fans are completely different than what they have been over the past few years. So that's kind of the, you know, that's kind of the reaction of what um, a lot of these providers have. But on the other side, it's the reaction for the fans themselves. I mean, I consider myself an avid sports fan. I'm sure a lot of you do. There are a billion of us. We look at all these different products, all these different experiences on TV, websites, mobile apps, and we look at how information is presented to us it's quite pathetic. I mean, it's really pretty sad. So FFS is an app reaction. Um, what it really also means is FFS stands for the future of fan stipulation, which I'm going to try to use the next few minutes to kind of go through what are the requirements for these fans in order, in, in order for them to avoid boredom, being underwhelmed, or just tuning out from watching and following their favorite teams, athletes, and sports. So let's start with the most obvious one, speed. Our own company, the company I work for, Sport Radar, has been at the forefront of this because they deal with providing data at the lowest possible latency to the entire sport betting industry. When you look at sports in general, one way to look at what the future holds is to look at the betting industry and what they've done around speed and providing access to uh, data within even less than a second of it actually happening on field. And that's where Sport Radar's legacy has been. And that same concept applies to fans. If you just take sport betting out of the equation, how many times have you been in front of a TV watching a game and you see this random person on a phone already celebrating an event that you haven't even seen on TV yet? That is speed. That is the power of fast data, right? So when we talk about an extremely short attention span driven fans that we we're all are and the next generation, speed matters the most. There's no point in giving information minutes, hours, or days later. It has to be right at the, at the time at which an event happens. So, the next most important thing, right, for us to cover is, is the depth. And you look at, again, an, uh, from a perspective of a fan, we're being treated with kid gloves. We are, we're, you know, we're left to consume information from based on some basic amount of data that a sports analyst just tries to, tries to come up with based on their past experience of that moment. In reality, in reality, there are millions and millions and millions of data points available for every sport. I mean, it is out there. And to construct a true picture of what just happened when you're watching a sport, you need to sift through all the millions of data points. So if, if you look at this image, I'm not sure how many of you would be able to even guess based on the 15 dots that are out there. So, you, so this is what happens in real life. There are some basic information that some analysts try to connect the dots and tell you a story of what just happened. But when you have more dots, the picture becomes more clear, right? That is exactly the same concept with insights. When you want to be told a story, you want to be told a story based on millions of dots that can be used to form a picture for you. So for us, when we look at how do we truly capture the attention of fans, it starts with using a lot of data that today is available thanks to sensors, thanks to player tracking systems, where we're talking about millions and millions of data points flowing into, into uh, an infrastructure where that it can be mined for insights, right? So that's kind of a, a key part of what's really missing in today's landscape. The fans are treated with poor storylines or predictable storylines based on top-level data constructed out of 15 data points. So depth is important, right? 
And as you'll see, now that the, with more dots, the picture becomes a lot more clearer. And in this case, that's actually our uh, board member for the US side for Sport Radar, who we have the privilege of working with quite closely. I know you're wondering, you're talking about, we, you know, you're thinking 4 million data points. How do you sift through all the noise? How do you sift through all the noise to bring something really relevant for the fans? And there, for us, there's really no way other than using advanced techniques. A human is, it's just not humanly possible for someone to analyze all the different data points and give you a storyline. So one of the things we've been doing um, for a while now is using quite advanced techniques, whether it be creating a bunch of predict predictive data models, um, predictive models around shot probability or a, when a particular goal is going to get scored. That's, you have to invest in a lot of those capabilities in order to come up with those nuggets of information for the fan. Let's use a live example in this case, right? On your right is basically a live player tracking view of a basketball game happening. And this comes to us um, pretty quickly while the game is going on. On the left, it is how a machine is actually interpreting that same data. So on the left is a probabilistic model, a predictive model for how good the quality of the shot that's about to be taken. Right? So imagine bringing this narrative now in front of the fan while they're watching, him, watching the, the game on the television. In this case, the person who has the ball is left wide open. And if you didn't know anything, you would be cursing the defensive team right now at this very moment and getting into an argument with your friends or how poor your team is or their team is. But if you notice the short probability model that the machine learning has, our technique is, uh, is uncovering, that's Andre Robertson, and he has a 28% probability of making that shot. So that it's perfectly fine. I mean, that was the strategy for the defensive team in this case, to leave that shooter wide open, knowing that that's the probability. They would rather focus that extra defender on somebody else, right? So now you're trying to bring actual richer insights-based storylines and narratives in front of fans. And it takes, it takes these kind of advanced techniques to do it. It's hard. It's not easy, but we owe this. We owe this kind of analysis for our fans to really enrich and create a premium experience. So that's kind of basketball. But if you look at you know, overall, considering what I just spoke about, 4 million data points per game or even more, it truly is an avalanche. It truly is an avalanche coming your way. And you need to have as, as, a, as a company, as a, as a provider of that content to fans, you need to have the technology chops. You need to invest in the right capabilities to survive that avalanche. Or you're going to get buried. So if you're Xander Cage from XXX, like that guy snowboarding right now, or you're working with a XXX level provider, you get to then say these famous words next. Okay. Nothing like fresh data. So Xander here clearly survives, and he's happy about getting fresh snow being poured all over him because he's because he can out you know outrun the avalanche. And I promise that's the last poor you know cheesy, cheeky video I'm going to play. So let's talk about engaging, snackable, shareable stories. Right? When he, fans are treated right now. With, with such low level, poor levels of information. Box scores, right? You, you look at this box, this box score hasn't really changed. This is from 1960s. That's a player card about a baseball player. And that is today, if you go to any of the websites, want to follow this player and check out its stats, it's pretty similar. You're just getting a table of 10, 15, 20 different metrics thrown at you. And you as a fan have to go sift through them. And there are people who actually enjoy doing that. That's fine. I'm not trying to dish that. But we truly deserve more. I mean, there's so much available to understand what 
a, a player is actually good at for a fan to connect more closely. Let me give you an example of what that could be. This is a player card for Draymond Green that we created. It's a simple, visual, snackable format that lets you know in one look what's his offensive strength, defensive strength, who does he play great with, in this case, Steph Curry, who's similar like him around the league, right? That's Paul Millsap. What are, what are his signature spots? This is how we can try to truly up-level the experience for fans, bring them closer to their athletes in simple, snackable, engaging ways. And this is not to say it's the truth. I mean, this is what the machine and, and a lot of the algorithms are trying to, based on data, come up with these, uh, these ways to describe a player. And it's up for the fans to go and take this and chatter and create and conversate and argue on social media platforms or the water cooler. So we're not really saying it's the truth, but it's giving you a much cleaner perspective based on data that you can go argue about. So here's an example of NFL. Think about you're watching an uh, NFL game, and all, all of you who are NFL fans know how complex the sport is. This is a pre-snap level information that a machine is actually reading and trying to understand what's about to happen, trying to predict what's about to happen. So in this case, it's third, third, and, four, th third and four down, uh, four yards to go, fits is who the machine identifies as the most likely player to get the pass. And these are the three different routes that he might be running or he is expected to run along with the actual probabilities. Think about this experience. If you're in front of a game, you watch something happen, you're like, hold on. Let me try to understand you. Press a button and, and something like this shows up on the screen and it's breaking it down for you. So you're no longer left to interpret the game in your own way. And this becomes our real-time experience of how we consume sports. Sixty-eight percent chance that Fitz actually runs a short breaking route into that boxed area. And that's all derived from algorithms. It's no one subjectively typing there. It's all from using AI and, and techniques. So, our goal in general is to bring advanced techniques and bring out the storytelling narratives in the complex world of sports for fans. Whether you're watching a game in real time, whether you're watching, uh, you know, you, you just want to consume a quick piece of nugget in a short form video on Instagram. You're waiting for, you're on the subway waiting for your train and you want to quickly know what happened last night. You have to start, I mean, as content providers, you have to cater to those needs. You have to provide content in many different formats, right? So the next example, this is, think about this being the more real time. You're watching the game. You want to know what happened. The next example, I'm on, I'm on that subway station. My train hasn't come, and I'm trying to catch up what happened. That video is a snackable format 
it's been created for social media platforms where you're, you're just as a casual fan. You don't have time to watch the game. You want to still engage in a banter at the water cooler in your office about did, you, did your team actually play well? That, give you, that gives the fan a very simple way to digest that. Did the, did the team actually take good shots? Did they actually make it? Did they, did, who was a star player for that game? The process to come up with that information that you just saw in the video is still complex. It still involves a ton of data processing, a lot of machine learning techniques, creating different shot probability models, analyzing every shot of the game, but it's giving it back to the fans in that very snackable format. Right? So for us, when we speak to fans, how do they want information? A repeating team is snackable, simple, engaging, shareable, right? So in this example, actually, uh, another aspect of what the fans are really clamoring for these days is whichever screen. There used to be a time where second screen and third screen experiences were the norm, where you're watching the, a game in front of the television, you have a phone, checking extended stats on your phone while the game is going on on your iPad, you're following a different red zone experience of games that are going on. On a computer, you have a fantasy lineup, and you're checking the latest stats based on what's going on. That has got to change. I mean, it is so much fragmented kind of an experience for fans these days. And in the future, I mean, we truly believe it doesn't matter whichever screen you're on. The content comes to you in the format that makes sense, whether you are um, you know, on, a, on a PC, you're on a, on a VR experience watching the game, but NBA's next VR uh, partnership that they have, or you're getting simple notifications on your phone throughout. The content is still got to be rich. In this case, LeBron, 32 chance of missing his next free throw. You, it's fun to know that and go share that with your friends, that I'm, I'm actually going to place a bet that he's going to miss the next free throw. Or you want to be more immersive. The fans really are clamoring for immersive experiences where you can actually touch. In this case, you're touching Kevin Durant on your screen, watching a live stream, and, uh, and, and, pop, and out pops his actual heart rate that you want to, again, share on your social media and have a fun you know, chatter with your friends. So there's valuable, and then there's valuable. This is, all of this, what I said, is all from a fan's perspective. How do we change the game? But there's a huge space for brands to play in this as well. The brands have a chance to, to take advantage and connect with their fans in the absolute moment of when the fans are trying to enjoy their sports. In this example, Heineken sending a notification. Dave, get your Heineken later. Ronaldo's about to get a free kick based on a predictive model. So in short, there is a lot to do here, right? It's, it's a death by a thousand cuts, if you can imagine that for a lot of the content providers. And it's not an easy road. You have to invest in a lot of these advanced techniques to truly connect fans and give them what, what they deserve, which is a much more smarter experience. So thank you.